Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl finally go back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So, if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to do it. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. We have some amazing weekly content. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy. We've got a podcast. Diving in with Funny and Jesse, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. We have some amazing conversations which you guys don't want to miss. We've got a Patreon. You guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate. Be shout out to the people that to the people to the person that suggested this and the people that keep on subscribing and have already subscribed. You guys are the best. Thank you very much. So, so today I'm going to be so today I'm going to be acting to the Bible prophecy proves Jesus not crucified without wasting time. Let's get into the video. One of the most contested issues between Christianity and Islam is the crucifixion. The death of Jesus on the cross is taken by Christians as an almost indisputable fact of history. Yet, the Qur'an makes the bold claim that Jesus was not crucified. In this video, we are going to see that the Qur'an has a remarkable insight into biblical prophecy, which proves that the Messiah was saved by God. The New Testament reports the following encounter between Jesus and Satan. Then the devil took him to the holy city, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Here, Satan tested Jesus with a diabolical challenge, Biblical prophecy foretold that angels will protect you, so prove it right by throwing yourself from a great height. Now, notice the response of Jesus. He does not accuse Satan of twisting scripture. Rather, he says, it is also written, which is an affirmation that the prophecy is indeed about him. Christian Bible commentaries confirm that the quoted prophecy is messianic. For example, the Jamieson, Fawcett and Brown commentary states, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, as if he should say, True, it is so written, and on that promise I implicitly rely. The pulpit commentary states, The devil, appealing to Jesus' consciousness of abiding communion with God, bids him enjoy to the full promise of God's protection. John Calvin's commentary states, Satan is not wrong in proving from this passage that angels have been given to Christ to wait on him, to guard him, and to bear him on their hands. Let's now take a closer look at the prophecy applied to Jesus. It's quoted from the Old Testament book of Psalms. No harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honour him. With long life I will satisfy him, and show him my salvation. We can see that this prophecy in Psalm 91 mentions that Jesus will not be harmed, that the angels will guard him, and that God will rescue and deliver him. Now, this is where the prophecy gets even more interesting. We actually find the Hebrew name of Jesus, Yeshua, is the very last word in the prophecy. The Hebrew word Yeshua means salvation. So not only does this prophecy explicitly foretell a saved Messiah, it even foreshadowed his very name, Yeshua. It is clear that any claims of a crucified Jesus completely contradict this prophecy. St. Augustine, 
an early church father and one of the greatest church theologians in history, discussed Psalm 91 in depth. Augustine fully acknowledged that the mention of the angels lifting up was in reference to Jesus. But when it came to those portions of the prophecy that are problematic from a Christian perspective, such as the mention of being rescued and protected, Augustine arbitrarily switched his interpretation to the church, i.e. the entire body of Christians. This is despite the fact that the entire prophecy is addressing a single person, which is demonstrated by its consistent use of pronouns in the singular, such as you, he and him. This goes to show that even church fathers struggled when it came to reconciling Psalm 91 with the New Testament claims of a crucified Jesus. This is why they had to resort to twisting the prophecy. This is what the Quran says about the crucifixion. The Quran is crystal clear. Jesus was saved from the crucifixion, being raised up to God, alive and unharmed. These verses show remarkable insight when we analyse them in detail. The Quran's claim that Jesus was saved by being raised up perfectly mirrors the prophecy in Psalm 91, which foretold that Jesus would be saved by being lifted up by angels. We can see that what the Quran reports about Jesus is in fact the fulfilment of Old Testament prophecy that the Messiah would not be harmed. The foundation of Christianity is the crucifixion. For the Quran to come along nearly 600 years later and challenge it is quite bold. Let's consider this from a psychological perspective. If Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was a false prophet, then he would have just gone along with New Testament claims that Jesus was crucified. This would have made it easier for Christians to convert to Islam, so there would have been a lot to gain. But Islam is not about what is convenient, it's about the truth. The implications of the Quran's position are far-reaching and actually go beyond Islam. One of the reasons that Jewish people reject Jesus is because of the crucifixion. They know that the Messiah cannot be crucified, based on Old Testament prophecies that we have seen. The Messiah is supposed to be someone who will be victorious, so any claim that he was whipped, tortured and died in humiliation is a contradiction. So, the New Testament claims that Jesus died ironically justifies the Jewish rejection of him. The Qur'an removes this stumbling block of a crucified Messiah and paves the way for the Jewish people to accept Jesus. Many have criticised the Qur'an and its audacity in challenging the New Testament crucifixion narrative. We have seen that it is in fact the New Testament accounts written by anonymous authors decades after Jesus which claim that Jesus was crucified, a complete contradiction of Old Testament prophecy that the Messiah would be saved from death. These prophecies are a vindication of the Qur'an's position and proof of its tremendous insight into the actual life and mission of the Messiah. To learn the truth about Jesus, please download your free copy of the book Jesus, Man, Messenger, Messiah from the link below. Well, that, that was an amazing video. This is what I always say. Uh, this guy read the Bible or that specific verse and he interpreted it the way he did. It's his opinion and the way he wants to see things or the way he sees things. Another person will read the same, same verse and still look at it in a different way and associate it to something way different. Another person will read it and take it in another way. We can all watch the same thing. We can all watch the same movie or read the same book, but then how we interpret it after we're done watching it or reading it or whatever the case is, is going to be different. We all can't see things through the same eye. We can't always see eye to eye. 
otherwise this was very very amazing let me know what you guys actually think about this do you agree with what he's saying do you have a differing opinion i mean i respect his opinion i respect yours as well just as i expect you to respect the other person's opinion that's next to you otherwise i enjoyed watching this and listening to this make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video